What we're going to look at now is solving trig equations and we're going to do these trig equations with the calculator but sometimes when they give us particular numbers we can do it without a calculator but we'll look at that in some later clips. So here's a, here's a really simple trig equation sine of some angle equals a half. Now you may remember what the particular angle is because you got a half here right but we're just going to look at how to solve it with a calculator anyway but you you may remember what particular angle gives you a half when you take sine of it um, so let's work out one particular answer and then what we'll do is we'll use the the graph for the sine function and and try and find some possible other ones as well okay so um, what we need to do is to solve this so we've got an angle we're taking sine of it and we get a half. And you may recall from GCSE level the inverse of sine. So the opposite operation to doing sine of something is sine to the minus one. Remember, sine is not a number as such. It's not. I can't. I'm not going to divide both sides by sine. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Sine is a function. So if you want to work out what theta is, you need to do sine to the minus one of both sides, or sine to the minus one of whatever number you've got here and that will be what theta is and let's work that out on the calculator um, so here's our calculator our scratch pad if we go to trig and we go to there sine to the minus one and in there type 0.5 or a half and press enter we get 30 so theta equals 30 degrees and because we're working in because our calculator is set up in degrees here it's telling us degrees the answer is going to be in degrees Right, but this is one of many answers. There are other angles that also give us a half when we take the sine of it. And we can see that from the graph. So let's make a sketch of the sine function and try and find some other possible answers. So let's start here. Remember, sine starts at 0, 0, 0, and then it goes up and down, and then it repeats itself up and down and so on. Um, and it does the same this side as well, so it would be up here and down there and so on. But we've got many different answers. If you think about, well remember that these are not all the same height, but they should all be at height of 1. But let's say um, 0.5 was here, 0.5 was there. Um, that's a half, right? 0.5. But if we draw a horizontal line going through that particular point, okay? And what we've worked out by sine, uh, by doing sine to the minus 1 and 0.5, we've got the angle 30. That's telling us that this particular value down here is 30 degrees, right? Okay, that particular value is 30 degrees. But there are other angles as well. If you look, there's another angle down here, another one here, another one here, and then there's some minus ones as well that, you know, that also have a height of, of, uh, of 0 0.5 when you take sine of it, right? Because this is sine of x, this graph here, sine of theta, right? Um, but if we remember key values, we can work out all of them now that we know that one's 30. We can work out all of them. Remember, um, it starts at 0 at 180. That's 180. This is 360. And then this is 180 later and so on and so forth. We can work out all these other values, right? We can work out these particular values. Um, because that's a gap of 30 there. So if I go in, uh, in 30 from 180, so if I do 180 take away 30, well what's that, that's 150 that's another possible answer for theta, theta could also be 150 if we check that, if we do sine of 150 degrees, okay 150 degrees let's do that, trig sine of 150 we also get 0 0.5, again that also gives us a half but there are other ones as well, what's this particular one here, what's that angle there and the way to think about this is, um, remember the sine wave uh, one complete wave loops around every 360 degrees or 2 pi, right? 362 pi. So what we do is if we have this first value 30, then this one, if you look at it, it looks identical to this one in terms of if you start here and go up, you see we start here and go up, It's this is another starting point of a wave. So if we add 360 to this this particular this our first answer we get another answer as well we get this one here and so we do 360 add 30 we get 390 
All right, and if we do sine of 390, you can check it for yourself, but yeah, it will give you half. It'll definitely give you half. So that one there is 390 degrees. Well, what about this one? Well, we've just worked out this particular answer, uh, that that answer is 150 degrees, right? That's 150 there, uh, 30 in from 180. And again, this one is just another 360 degrees away from 150. So if we add 360 to that, what do we get? Okay, so add 360 to that, and we get 510 degrees. So if you do sine of 510, you get 0 0.5. You'll definitely get 0 0.5. So that one there is 510. And I can actually just work out as many as I want, because now that I've got these two, I've got... Okay, if I scroll down a little bit. Now that I've got 30 and 150, if I just keep adding 360 to these two, keep adding 360 to these, so... Um, I added 360 to that and got, f I added 360 to this one and I got 510, but if I add 360 to this, so plus 360, what do I get? I get 870. Okay, that's another possible answer, and if I add 360 to, which is the one, uh, one um, which are the one did I, okay, 390, if I add 360 to that, I get another answer as well. And the same thing, because these are in the loops of 360, and the same thing, if I subtract 360, I can work out some negative answers, so I can work out this one here by doing 30, um, 30 take away 360 well what's that that's minus 330 right and if I check that on the calculator if I did a uh, sine of minus 330 okay let's see if we get the same answer trig sine minus 330 press enter and we get a half as well and then if I wanted to work out this one, that, that one there is, okay, that was minus 330. That one there is 360 away from 150. So I need to do 150, take away 360. And what do I get? Minus 210. That one there is minus 210. So now, actually, the thing about working out multiple solutions to theta is that once you know the ba the two basic ones inside this hump effectively, you can work out as many as you want just by adding or taking away 360 to this. So adding multiples of 360 to this one and this one will give me other answers as well. Or taking off multiples of 360 to these two basic ones gives me other possible answers for for theta as well. So theta, uh, the calculator only gives you one particular answer, it gives us 30, but you can work out as many as you want. Just by using the sine wave and using the symmetry of the sine wave, remember these humps are symmetrical, we discussed before, okay, um, and then just adding 360 gives us multiple answers. Okay, let's look at another type of question, and then what we'll do is we'll try and find multiple answers to this. Right, we have that five T uh, 5 sine theta equals minus 4, minus 4. Now what this means is I could put a time sign between this. It literally means 5 times sine theta. 5 times sine of something equals minus 4. So what's that something got to be? Right, so um, first of all, if you think about it, what's happening? If you want to think about it in sort of layman's terms, um, think about starting with theta. First of all, we're taking the sine of it. And then we're timesing it by 5. And we're getting minus 4 coming out, so we need to reverse the process. So what would you do first? You'd divide both sides by 5, right? So let's from that because that's too babyish. Let's, let's, let's do it properly. So get rid of that 5. That 5 is multiplying everything, so divide both sides by 5. So minus 4 fifths. Okay, so dividing that by 5, we'll get a sine theta here. So what's minus 4 divided by 5? That is minus 0.8. Okay, that's sine theta. And let's just use the calculator to work out what theta is. So we've got to the stage where sine of something equals minus 0 0.8. So theta equals sine to the minus 1 of, no, sorry, of minus 0 0.8. Right, what, do, what does the calculator tell us when we work that out? Um, so trig sine to, the minus, sine to the minus 1 of minus 0 0.8. Press enter there. We get minus 53.1. Let's see that. Theta is minus 53.1 to one decimal place. Okay, right now um, let's try and find out other potential answers for theta. So again, let's draw a sketch of our sine wave. Okay, let's just concentrate on this bit. Right, this is zero. This is 180. This is 360. 
I've got 270 here in the middle and 90 here. 270, 90. All right, so what is it telling us? Well, actually, we need to draw a bit of the negative side as well, don't we? We need to draw this side as well. Oops. Let me continue that line on a little bit. Okay, so this would be... This would be... Let me just make that a little bit better. Okay, this would be minus 180 here. Let me draw it above. I really shouldn't do it, but here's minus 180 there. Okay, uh, what it's telling us is that if we want, well, what, what sine theta? Sine theta is minus 0 0.8. So minus 0 0.8 is going to be somewhere about, about there, right? About this particular height, right? That's minus on our on our y-axis. That's going to be minus 0 0.8, right? Roughly about there. So we've got one particular answer, and it's telling us is theta is minus 53.1. But if you look at it, minus 53.1 is back here, right? Minus 53.1. But obviously, I don't want negative answers. I want, maybe I'll, maybe for my particular problem, I want some positive answers. So if I've got one, one point, this particular one, this one here, kind of, if you look at it, there's a kind of trough bit here, and then this trough bit here. This particular point is 360 away from this one, so I just need to do 360 add minus 53.1, or effectively 360 take away that. 360 take away 53.1, oops, 360 take away 53.1 gives us 306.9. So this answer's got to be 306, oops, not 300, 306.9. Nine. That's that's actually effectively coming in 53.1 degrees from 360 that side. Okay, that's one answer there. Okay, now let's work out this one. Okay, well, if you look at it, this gap is 53.1. Okay, I know it's in the negative side, but it's 53.1 is the gap. So all I need to do is come in 53.1 from 180 to, from minus 180 to work out this answer here. So let's um, let's work out that one. So I need to do minus 180 and add 53.1 because I'm coming in from that side. So minus 180, add 53.1 gives us minus 126.9. So that one there is minus 126.9. But let's say I want to work out the corresponding one down here. Okay, if you look at it, we've worked out this one. Again, this is 360 away from minus 126.9. So I just need to, to work out this one here, I just need to do minus 126.9, add 360. Okay, so add 360 to my final answer, you get 233.1. So this one's got to be 233.1. But once I've got these two, I can work out other ones as well. So if I add another 360 to that one and this one, I get some more answers. But let's just check that they work. Let's just check that they sort of they satisfy this condition, right? Let's pick a random one. Let's pick this one here. Okay, and remember we rounded our answer here to one decimal place, so we're going to be slightly off, okay? But um, we're going to we'll be pretty close. So let's check it out. So let's do five times sine of three hundred and six point nine. Okay, and let's just check we get close to minus four with that. So five times trig sine of, what was it again, 306.9, let me just double check, 306.9, yeah, press enter, uh, yeah, pretty close, minus 3.998, which rounds, if you round that to one decimal place, that is definitely minus 4, right, so we get minus 4, so again, adding 360 to this, if I add another 360 to this, or this one, then I get multiple answers, right, so as long as you worked out the two basic ones inside a particular loop, you can work out more and more answers. Okay, we're looking, going to look at some more complicated trig equations in our next clip.